from the ancient Olympic games in which naked men punched each other into submission to more modern games where athletes have used metal legs to sprint to victory, one symbol connects ancient to modern. Today, we're talking about what makes the Olympic flame so special. Some would say the story of the Olympic flames started all the way back in the ancient games, held in Olympia in 776 BCE. But to understand why fire was so important to the Greeks, you have to look at mythological prehistory. The Greeks believed fire was given to them by a primordial titan named Prometheus, who stole it from the gods proper in kindling the minds and spirits of mortals. Now, fires were nearly constantly kept lit in temples throughout ancient Greece, but during the Olympics, 100 oxen were sacrificed and a whole mess more of fires were kept lit during the games. And remember, keeping a fire lit in ancient Greece wasn't as simple as, you know, plugging a light bulb in. Fires had to be maintained by priests, wood and oil had to be collected and monitored constantly, and the sanctuary of Zeus, a site containing a 40-foot ivory and gold statue of the god, which was so spectacular it was dubbed one of the original seven wonders of the world, shared in the glory with the nearby temple of Hera, Zeus's wife. While the Olympic flames burned in ancient Greece, wars were abandoned, death penalties were stayed, and borders were opened, all to facilitate the best performance by Olympic athletes and artists. Why were death penalties stayed, you might ask? Well, one wrestler actually won a match, toppling his opponent while in a fatal chokehold, dying but claiming victory. Everyone could be a contestant while the flames burned. A baker from Corobus won the first Olympics, fully armored Spartan warriors raced in marathons, and even Roman emperors dove into the fray to win gold medals. Actually, let me take a poll on that one. Nero, the emperor notorious for fiddling while Rome burned, was awarded the gold in the chariot race, but never actually finished. He crashed out before the finish line. Now, contemporaries pointed out he was in the lead by a lot, and no one could have overtaken him had he not crashed, but that sounds just a little bit too much like imperial privilege, if you ask me. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Now, I could go on and on and on about the ancient Olympic Games and how they had their own doping controversies with one athlete drinking two and a half gallons of wine a day or the ancient advent of Olympic sportswear, which replaced the nude with a penis restraint referred to as a kinodesme or a dog leash. But the ancient Olympics lasted nearly a thousand years, whereas the modern games have really only been around for about a century. Despite that, the Olympic flame carried on. Well, at least eventually. The modern Olympic Games were revived in 1896, but wouldn't carry on the Olympic flame tradition until the 1928 Games. The first modern Olympic flame was lit by a utility worker in Amsterdam presiding over the games from the Marathon Tower, which still stands to this day. Since then, a lot of pomp and circumstance have been added. The flame is literally lit from the sun by 11 women representing the Vestal Virgins of ancient Greece at the Temple of Hera as it stands today. These women use a parabolic mirror to literally take the fire from the sun. Carrying the flames to the games is now known as the Olympic Torch Relay and involves literally carrying the flame to the site of the games wherever they are in the world. The torches themselves vary year to year and have been carried everywhere from the top of Mount Everest to the International Space Station, with one torch even being specially made to burn underwater so it could pass over the Great Barrier Reef on its way to the Sydney Games. Participating nations nominate torchbearers, and the people who light the Olympic cauldron are always given top honors. The 1964 torch, for example, was used to light the outset of the Tokyo Games by Yoshinori Sakai, a man born in Hiroshima the day the atomic bomb was dropped. He ignited the flames to signal the renewal of Japan. Ripley's Believe It or Not actually has the torch that Muhammad Ali used to kick off the games in Atlanta. And now, despite the modern games keeping the Olympic flame alive, still isn't always a sure thing. At the 1976 Games in Quebec, a rainstorm doused the cauldron. An official actually relit the flame using his cigarette lighter. But that flame was quickly snuffed out and relit with a backup flame because, of course, they keep backup flames. The IOC keeps backup flames in protected locations, all of which were lit from the original flame in Olympia. All manner of natural events, as well as intentional sabotage by people, have tried to extinguish the flames, but even the rigors of a global pandemic haven't managed to put the Olympic flames out. Though the games were delayed a year due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, they are now taking place in Tokyo. Officially still called the 2020 Olympics, the cauldron has been lit and burns proudly and brightly for the world. And while our athletes might wear clothes, the Olympic spirit from ancient times burns on. If we've ignited your curiosity for the Olympic flame, visit your local Ripley's Auditorium as we have a collection of Olympic torches spread across our many, many locations. Or if you want to see more, keep an eye out for our newest annual 
Ripley's Believe It or Not Out of the Box, which showcases our Torch collection as well. You can pre-order it now or when it launches September 28th. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe for more Strange History, and like this video if you enjoyed it. Vale.